What's up, YouTube? It's your boy USS Soul back here again for another video. Today we got one by New Rock Stars. I'm sorry. We got a new video by <laughs> New Rock Stars. Uh, Eric Voss. We have Morbius post credit scenes and ending explained. Now, I did not post a review for Morbius. However, um, if you want to know how it is I felt about the film, I thought it was okay. I thought it was an okay film. It wasn't super, it wasn't really good. It wasn't great. It wasn't bad or terrible either i just thought it was okay you know what i'm saying i still rank it above like a first fantastic four no not the the, the 2015 fantastic four um i liked it more than uh uh, uh uh captain marvel um i liked it i'd rather watch it uh than um birds of prey um wonder woman 84 i'd rather watch uh morbius um so it's not i don't think it's the most terrible super movie ever you know what i'm saying but it's 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 okay you know what i'm saying that's my overall opinions on it and i know some of you may agree and or disagree so let me know feel free to you know express yourself in the comments anyways so, like i think people are just kind of jumping on the bandwagon because as soon as critics hate something more often than not a lot of people are like oh mm, critics hate it uh, probably a bad movie or absolutely terrible won't see it inform my own opinion you know what i'm saying because people actually like that nowadays it's crazy you know what i'm saying anyways so <laughs> we got this video because yes those post credit scenes were a bit confusing however i think i kind of got what they're trying to go with here but let's see uh let's get some clarification from eric boss or new rockstar so before we get into it y'all let me know down below in the comments how was your day hopefully it's pretty good but if it wasn't hopefully this makes it just a little bit better let's get it let's go Yes, Morbius was. was a movie, leaving us questioning it was whether a movie. we all saw the same ending of Spider-Man No Way Home, or if some folks might have seen an international re-edit of No Way Home that alters the logic of the memory wipe spell because for some markets, worldwide gaslighting hits a little Spider-Man close to home. I am going to do my oh, best snap. to answer your questions about the ending and post credit scenes of Morbius, all right. but a spoiler warning before I continue, I guess, even though the director of this movie a week ago clarified stuff about the post credit scene on... Oh, okay, look. At the end of Venom, Let There Be Carnage, and Spider-Man No Way Home, and in No Way Home itself, it is clearly established. Uh, I can't speak. It is clearly established that it is possible for characters to transfer from one multiverse to another. One half. <laughs> the events of No Way Home had the effect of transferring Venom and Vulture and maybe others back and forth between the MCU and the Venom universe. De. Okay. Okay. The only thing is, is they didn't really show it in No Way Home. They didn't show the transference of characters from out of Peter's universe to other universes. They showed the character, the transference of other, you know, other of other characters from different universes coming into Peter's universe. You know what I'm saying? So they didn't show the opposite. So I think that's kind of what's confusing people. But I see what he's saying. It makes sense, I guess, kind of. Let's see. Winner. Ah, uh, dang, why? Scenes, it was okay. Keaton, it was okay. Adrian Toomes, after he and nearly every Spider-Man reference... We Honestly, if it weren't for the fact that Eternals is actually, like, is part of a bigger story and is connected to the MCU, if it weren't for that fact, I'd probably, honestly, potentially put it near, or if not beside, Eternals. Like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, Eternals visually did look really good, I'd give it that. But besides that, I mean, I wasn't super impressed. Like I said, if it were, if you were to take out Eternals, uh, the fact that it was connected to the MCU, like any type of nod connection or potential it has for the MCU and just keep it like a standalone thing and take out certain stuff, then I'd be like, yeah, Morbius is definitely, in my opinion, I think more entertaining and better. But, you know, I, you know it's, 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 it's just, eh. Trailers for this movie were removed from the final cut of the main film. Right. So, Dr. Michael Morbius, suffering from a blood disorder, develops a serum from human and bat DNA that gives him vampiric powers. A serum stolen... It looked cool visually, in my opinion. suffering from this disorder and the funder of his research, Lucian, a.k.a. Milo. Lucian steals the serum, frames Michael Such for the murder, sends too. him to prison, but then after Michael figures out it was him, he breaks out and battles Lucian in the subway. And then, fearing from his own increasing need for blood and what Lucian might do with these powers, Michael develops a new serum to kill living vampires. Lucian kills their mentor, played by Jared Harris, and injures Martine. Michael has to bite Martine to save her 
her life, but also powering himself up, leading to an aerial battle in New York that goes down in the sewers, where Michael summons a swarm of bats. The only thing the was, spoilers, I guess, if you, I mean, he said spoilers, but the only thing was, I feel like the fight at the end could have been a bit longer, although, then again, their fights were pretty long because they had, like, a lot of slow-mo shots, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it didn't end the way I thought it would, you know what I'm saying? Because it was, like, pretty quickly, like, he just knocked him down a couple, like, one or two times, and Morbius got knocked down, like, once. And then after he got up that one time, like, he finished him with, like, wave of bats, stab, done. You know what I'm saying? Like, I thought it'd be a little bit more there, but, you know, it's just whatever. And it hit him with that serum. Martine wakes up, herself now a living vampire. Then right. onto the credits, which gives us more MCU connectivity than we really know what to do with. In the yeah, first scene, some people we see were... a nighttime shot of Manhattan <laughs> with purple wrists streaking through the sky. Like no way as home. the ones in the final battle of Spider-Man No Way Home. Right. Then shot inside a prison facility of light streaming through a cell window. And inside that cell is Michael Keaton, Adrian Toomes, last seen in Spider-Man Homecoming, a movie set in the MCU. The right. glow fades and he touches himself in disbelief looking at his reflection in the glass mirror that they definitely install in prisoner cells and says to himself, well, hope the food's better in this joint. Then we got to a report from New York Spectrum One News, a bizarre story developing at the Manhattan Detention Center when a man identifying himself as Adrian Toomes simply appeared in an otherwise empty cell. A hearing has been set that could likely lead to his immediate release. How did they realize Top story not? there. Not the giant purple cracks in the yeah? sky. <laughs> hey, it's New York. It's New York, we see crazy things all the time. Into an SUV for that hearing, likely footage from the scene where in the trailers he crossed paths with Michael, Michael Morbius. Morbius. Right. Michael Morbius. Got tired of doing the whole good guy thing. What's up, Doc? Hey, I feel like they could have kept that. You and I should stay in touch. Again, see? They could have kept that. In the main right, film. that's what I'm saying. Black. And then onto the second post credit scene, Morbius drives a sports car out yeah, to a remote nice. location. He checks his watch. The wind blows. And Tombs swoops in with dun, the older dun, suit dun, that we saw in Spider-Man Homecoming. But it does look slightly different. It's a bit more slightly. rickety. And his oxygen mask is now pointed to look like a vulture beak. beak. He says, thanks for meeting me, Doc. I've been reading about you. Morbius says, I'm listening. Tomb says, I'm not sure how I got here. Has to do with Spider-Man, I think. I'm still figuring this place out, but I think a bunch of guys like us should team up. Do some good. And Morbius responds, intriguing. Now, it is clear that Sony's it's intention weak dialogue, is to set up I'm not a lie. <laughs> That was kind of weak dialogue, but, by the director yeah. to Cinema Blend. He also confirmed that this movie is set in the universe of Venom, and Venom Let right. Carnage, the same right. universe Eddie Brock returned to in that No Way Home post credit scene. Correct. Thus, Morbius's reference to Venom in his joke earlier. I and the director Venom. confirmed that this universe has a Spider-Man in it, but would not yet say which one. Only right. that, quote, it is my understanding that audiences will discover that answer soon. Since Tobey Maguire's universe had its own Venom, and since he signals that they see the MCU as a distinctly separate universe, right. that leaves Andrew Garfield Andrew as Garfield's the likeliest option of the Spider-Man yeah. of this I mean, he's already been rumored no for a while Home now. Is something we'd all definitely love to but see. But then they have to, like, branch in, like, how it is, like, there's no connections, you know what I'm saying? Because, I don't know. And then also, like, it would have to take place after No Way Home, which, I mean, of course, I guess that makes sense because Ed, the Vulture... I don't know. This is interesting where they're taking this. I just I just I just can't wait to see it all come to play. But the Spider Man of this universe could also be a live action Miles Morales. Ah. By Peter Parker and Max Dillon's exchange in no way. Interesting. I just thought you was gonna be black. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry. There's gotta be a black Spider Man somewhere. You look genuinely genuinely kinda sad when he said that he was like, Oh man, Miles I'm Morales sorry. could be introduced in this future Sinister Six film. A film that'll likely also include Craven the Hunter and maybe also yeah. Chameleon, Black Cat. Scorpion, yeah. Rhino, and Madam Web, all characters at Sony's. I really, I'm actually now, intrigued using by this crazy movie. Using bat-based medicine to cure yourself can have some unexpected consequences and negative side effects. Similarly, the electronics we use every day have big negative side effects. Products, they turn into sponsorship. E -waste. When you throw electronics away, they become uh, he, e waste, which represents he weaved that in the there really, really, really well. Good. However, we should also note that Tombs and Morbius's team up was to quote do some good, good, and they did not directly antagonize Spider-Man. So maybe Tombs still has some goodwill for Spider-Man for saving his life and Homecoming, maybe. and they might actually help him against the Sinister Six. But how did Tombs acquire his that. Vulture suit if he transported into this universe merely in his prisoner jumpsuit? That's well, a good the point. The director said only that it's not quite the same suit as Homecoming. He is a resourceful guy. 
Okay. okay, but the whole point of Spider-Man Homecoming is that Toombs and his crew used the alien tech. Of Chitauri tech right. Taken after the Battle so... of New York. They weren't building this kind of weaponry otherwise. The core theme of Spider-Man Homecoming was that the Avengers' actions had street-level consequences. Right. One of whom was Spider-Man and the problems he had to deal with. So yeah, they without Chitauri that tech in this universe, how would Toombs be able to reassemble the wings from a box of scraps? Uh, uh, <laughs> really I don't the know. Question is Adrian Toomes even arrived to this oh, yeah. universe because according well, to Spider-Man No Way Home the he th knows Spider-Man's identity right because he figured it out at the end of the movie so I'm assuming something happened to where instead of you know how people came from different multiverses into Peter's someone left from Peter's and it was him I guess I, I guess runes of cough cough spell transports people who know Peter Parker as Spider-Man from other universes into, into the reality where right. that spell was cast, right. the MCU. And at the end of that movie, all those intruders were returned to their home realities. Right. But Adrian Toomes was already in the MCU. The MCU is his home reality. Right. There is no reason he should have been transported out of the reality where the spell was cast into explain some it. other random Somehow. reality. And no reason for him to stay in that other random reality forever after Doctor after Strange the snap. finished the snap. Gotcha. At the very least, he should have gone back home. The director yeah. tried to explain, quote, at the end of Venom, Let There Be Carnage, in Spider-Man No Way Home, and in No Way Home itself, it is clearly established that it is possible for characters yeah, it's to transfer possible. from we one just universe don't know. to another. The events of No Way Home had the effect of transferring Venom and Vulture, and maybe others, back and forth between the MCU but and we the But we only saw, universe. we didn't really see it. We saw back and forth, but in a sense that, like, it happened, Venom went to No Way Home, and it came out of, we're just gonna say No Way Home, just keep it short. And went into No Way Home and out of No Way Home like that, you know what I'm saying? Whereas Vulture, he seems apparently he's been in, he's been, he's went to Venom. I'm just going to say Venom is the Sony universe. He's went to Venom, but he hasn't yet come out of Venom. And the fact is, like, we didn't see that kind of correspondence with any other characters. You know what I'm saying? So, I get what he's saying. It's just that we didn't see it. You know what I'm saying? So, we don't, and the audience is kind of confused. But I, I think I get what he's getting at, though. Uh-huh. Obviously, that was not clearly established right. at all. Right, that's what I'm saying. But he uses the words back and forth. So right. I guess, according to this new logic, it doesn't matter that the spell was cast in the MCU, and it doesn't matter that Doctor Strange patched it. Those purple cracks just represent a kind of revolving door through which anyone who knew Peter was Spider-Man on either side of that barrier could randomly transport in either direction. Right. I mean, dude, by your logic, those others stolen from the MCU by the Venomverse, now in those neighboring cells beside tombs, could be Hulk! Or Thor, or Wong. I mean, why not take everyone, Sony? Uh, Hulk doesn't uh, know. I just pray he? that Madam Web gives us a better explanation. Gotcha. And perhaps all Peter Parkers are connected by such a strong shared arachno frequency. That's that probably more Peter sense Parker because look, Spider Verse. Kind of yeah. Magnetism that drew back with him into the Venomverse. Someone in the MCU who knew that Peter was Spider Man. In this case. Adrian Toomes. I mean, who knows? Maybe it was even orchestrated by Madam Web to balance the cosmic scales. Ah. Because she knew that Peter and Miles would need Adrian That'd Toomes more than Tom Holland would need him. I mean, I don't know. I don't really care. Just give us something more than... Uh, why? <laughs> you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Ian hey. Boss. Follow New Rockstars and subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis Definitely. and attempts to analyze everything that you love. Or maybe don't love. Either way, thank you for watching. All right, appreciate you, man. Shout out to new rock stars, Eric Voss. Did a great job with this one, man. I really love how you tied everything together and try to make it make sense. Um, anyways, though, everyone down below in the comments, let me know how it is you felt about the film and how do you feel about the post credit scenes and maybe if you have your own ideas and details and, and, and theories and conspiracies and potential points of exploration, you should let me know down below in the comments because I'm very, 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 very intrigued. And as I've already stated, I didn't hate the film. I didn't think it was bad. I just thought it was okay. I don't know. A lot of people are like, I just feel like people are just bandwagoning now. Like a lot of people who haven't even seen the movie are just like, oh, if critics are saying it's bad, it's probably bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, go out and form your own opinion. It's okay to not disagree with what everyone else is saying. Disagree with the masses sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I didn't say it was a good movie. I just said it was okay. So it was like, you know? decent time i had fun watching like certain visual effects and watching this character i'm just curious to see where he's going to go from next i honestly honestly i want to see a fight between venom and morbius so like yo i'm not gonna lie i think morbius might actually take him y'all let me know down below in the comments though that being said <laughs> how in the hell is spider-man gonna one take on venom 
Because the way they have Venom set up, it's like, how would... He doesn't even look like he could, you know, do it. Anyways, I mean, in the comics, it makes sense. But the way they just have him set up in the movies, like, Venom is pretty OP. And then Morbius just out of nowhere is, like, extremely OP. I mean, he's pretty OP in the comics, but it's like... I don't know how they're gonna do this. This is gonna be interesting. Y'all let me know down below in the comments what your thoughts. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitch, follow me on YouTube, and also follow me on Instagram at Lurus SO Sam's YouTube channel. That being said, peace.